Do you want to install your 578 mobile CPS software without any effort at all? Installing the right CPS can be stressful and certainly annoying. Hunting down the correct firmware, figuring out how to download it, and then making sure it works. It all sounds like a real headache, but it doesn't have to be. Today we'll show you how to install the right CPS software for your Anytone 578. In just a few minutes you'll have your radio CPS software installed and working, allowing you to make contacts with hams around the world. So let's get started. Okay guys, so first of all, what we're going to go ahead and do is proceed into our website where you can download uh, the CPS software here for the 578, the newest version. And within this package, you'll also find the firmware folder, which we'll go into here in just a moment. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just go to bridgecomsystems.com and we're gonna go to the support section. And we're gonna to go to the Anytone 578 uh, CPS and firmware downloads. And our newest version here is um, CPS and firmware version uh, 1.11. So we'll proceed for a download on that. Let's go ahead and open it. Let's go ahead and do an extract. Extract all, and then select a folder. Now for my purposes, I'm just gonna call it Anytone 578v1 underscore 11. And we'll go ahead and put it in that directory. You can call the directory, whichever you like. Um, note that this um, CPS and firmware is going to be the exact same for the commercial version as well as the amateur version of the radio. So that's important to note here as well. We'll go ahead and extract that. And now we're looking here at the folder that we have just extracted it to. So we have the CPS program in this folder that says CPS. And we have the firmware file in this folder that says firmware. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead into d578uv version 1.11 CPS. And to set up the actual CPS software on my computer, I'm gonna go ahead and right click. I'm gonna go ahead and run that as administrator. You just wanna do that for a proper install. Ignore this little Windows protection message. And we'll do a run anyway. And we'll select yes here. And I would like the English version of this. Okay, it's gonna say D any tone, D five seven eight UV underscore one dot one one. You're gonna go ahead and change that D. If it says D, go ahead and change D to a C. If there is no secondary or D drive on here, so we'll specify that as C. And hit next. And we'll go ahead and create a desktop icon on that as well. We'll go ahead and launch the software that we had just installed. All right, so we're gonna plug our USB cable in here, the side of the PC. Take the other end of our USB cable and we'll plug it on into our radio. And just to show you that the CPS install that we've just done works, we'll go ahead and read from radio. Note this has been done on a Windows 10 uh, PC, which I highly recommend for the installation on here. All right, so we're gonna select our COM port here. It's detected that we have our radio connected to a COM port number three. We're gonna click OK. We're gonna go ahead and read from our radio.
All right, so we have read data completed. And as you can see, we now have the um, code plug, which exists on our uh, radio here, which is pretty cool. Now, if we wanted to update the firmware on this, we'd go to our tool menu. We would go to firmware upgrade. And we would open the file um, in the folder that we created. So we would go into uh, this PC. And in this case, I went ahead and saved it to my C drive. And I saved it, I saved it to version 1.11 of uh, CPS. And the file you're wanting is the SPI file right here in the firmware folder. And that is where you would find that file. Now note, if we actually did write this to our radio, uh, we would have to then go in and we would have to do a complete reset of the entire radio. That is a factory reset. So if you do do this, make sure you back up your code plug first. Uh, but this is a correct installation, and this also shows you where to go to get that firmware file if you were to need it. And that's how you fully install your CPS software into your Anytone 578 mobile. From my experience, the easiest way to find the newest CPS software is through our website. If you are looking to update your radio software to the latest version, you can simply go straight to our support page and find your radio. If you're not exactly sure what kind of software you're looking for, only search for your radio's name and CPS software. Do you have more questions about the 578 mobile that we didn't cover today? Let us know down below in the comments. To keep up to date about new things about amateur radio, Video, click the notification bell. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sebastian, KB0TTL with BridgeCon Systems and 73.